So uh, for the next talk, like uh, one of the things I, I find very exciting about Postgres is that it's a bit like playing with Legos. You take a take a base and then you can put all these different blocks on it, like the extensions. And uh, for example, you can put Citus and PostGIS together and and uh, do uh, things and create something that's greater than the sum of the parts. So our next speakers, uh, my my Paul and uh, Nero are uh, gonna talk about how they build a very large scale geospatial analytics application on top of uh, Citus and PostGIS. So um, uh, yeah, the screen is yours. Thank, thank you, Marco. Hi. Uh, hello everyone. Yeah, uh, 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 I'm Nirav Savani. I'm a senior engineering manager uh, working in Guy Carpenter. So, uh, so Guy Carpenter is one of the biggest uh, reinsurance broker. Uh, so, uh, who are our customers? So all all the big big names of insurance companies worldwide. We uh, are our customers. So we uh, uh, like so we provide them with reinsurance and risk management and financial management. Uh, 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 like I specifically am part of a team which provides uh, analytics uh, s solutions for uh, our customers. So, uh, as you can understand, most of the property and casualty insurance. The location intelligence is a big part of their risk management and actual man, uh, analysis. So uh, what we build uh, is geospatial applications, which can allow them to uh, uh, look uh, look at their data and analyze their risk in real time. Yeah. So so this is the yeah, a brief kind of context about what our application is. So we, we take uh, uh, policy data from the insurance companies, and then we get catastrophe data uh, from various uh, catastrophe vendors. These are perils from all over the world. And then we provide portfolio risk management, underwriting support, and catastrophe response analysis. So uh, anyone from uh, underwriting uh, agent to a claims analyst to a C-suit user for, for these clients uh, use our applications for uh, looking at their accumulation, uh, analyzing their risk. How, how, how does a potential catastrophe could impact their portfolio. They can analyze the uh, like predicted loss which they could incur on their portfolio. They can, uh, when they are underwriting a new policy, they can calculate uh, how much premium to charge based on the uh, loss prediction for that uh, that location. And whenever uh, there is an event uh, about to be coming, so let's say there is a prediction of a hurricane which is coming uh, on the US Eastern Seaboard. So they could see live uh, feeds on real time, uh, do a spatial analysis of that uh, observed track of that hurricane against their portfolio location and see how many of their locations will be impacted by that and then take uh, action accordingly. So uh, here is one uh, kind of a high level overview of like to, uh, what it boils down. So on the left, what you are seeing is uh, policy locations of a uh, uh, insurance company, uh, like a snapshot of some of the locations. Uh, so as you can see, they can see these locations on the map. Uh, they can analyze uh, and slice and dice against various uh, coverage metrics uh, uh, of those locations, like total insured value or premium or site limit. And on the right, what we source is the catastrophe or what we call uh, as event or peril in insurance terms. So these could, these are uh, basically, uh, perils like hurricane, severe convective storm, wildfire, earthquake, uh, winter storm. So uh, we get these spatial tracks and points and polygon data from various vendors, some static and some live feeds, uh, and load it in our database. So essentially, what they are doing is uh, they are going to analyze their data, which is on the left, against this catastrophe data. Here, I have an example of Hurricane Irma. Which, which was a big uh, hurricane which had impacted the US back in 2017. Uh, yeah. So uh, when, when both of these data sets are loaded within Postgres, uh, how does it look? Yeah, so you can see here on the left, the policy data, you know, it, it has the site ID, some other attributes like policy number, uh, uh, lat latitude and longitude of that risk or that policy location. Uh, and then one, when when it's saved in the database, what you see there uh, over here uh, is is the shape. Uh, so uh, that's that's a geometric uh, geometry data type. So that's a geometric representation of that lat long. And on the right, uh, you see the uh, 
data representation of that storm which you saw on the earlier screen, the uh, Irma, Hurricane Irma. So you can see each and every track. So each and every uh, layer on that storm, the tracks, uh, the the different bands, wind bands, you know, the uh, the areas or regions as you can see, uh, like uh, which is on the outside, which is of a uh, low severity leading to the uh, core or the eye of the hurricane where it's a uh, category five winds. So all of those is uh, stored in the database as a geometric data type. Uh, and then how you really find which locations uh, of my policy data set fall within the hurricane is using this query as you can see at the bottom. So we use a post GIS function called ST intersects and to it you pass two uh, geometric uh, objects. Uh, so here we are passing A dot shape and B dot shape. Uh, and we are just putting a filter uh, because we want to specifically profile the data against the current storm, which is Irma. So this will give all the locations uh, from the left-hand side, which, which fall within that. So this is very similar to how you will do any other, uh, you know, where join on an integer or a string data type. Uh, so, and when they are really looking at their data, this is how they will look at. So they, they will have their policy data, either at the location level, but as you can see, when it's zoomed out, you could see uh, here, uh, it, it's, 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 it's at county level. So they are seeing the thematic shading of all the policy locations. Uh, what you are seeing here is the TIV exposure. So what that means is the darker the color, that's where they have more exposure. And then, then they can overlay the shape. And then on the left, they can see the total summary of uh, what is the total insured value of all my policies, which is impacted as a result of this hurricane. Yeah. And hurricane is not the only one. This here I'm showing the example of hurricane, but uh, we provide uh, libraries, uh, uh, library of all the past perils which has happened uh, in past hundreds of years. We have it in our database. So they have a whole library of cat events they can. Uh, so let's say if they wanted to see, okay, what will my portfolio look like if let's say Hurricane Sandy, which came in 2012. Uh, uh, or if they want to see uh, their earthquake, like there was an earthquake in Japan a month ago, Honshu. So if that earthquake were to hit uh, now, how will it impact my locations? Uh, or wildfire, uh, or uh, at, uh, at the bottom right here, CRC, uh, severe storm weather report. So these are uh, tornado and hailstorm uh, reports. So these, so uh, uh, event could be either a complex polygon with thousands of vertices, or it could be hundreds of, uh, individual lat longs combined together uh, uh, as series of data. So we provide all, all of this to the so the user has option to pick and choose any of these. So uh, here they they could be looking at uh, points of interest. Uh, this could be uh, terror locations or this could be past incidents of storm which had occurred. And uh, they have their portfolio data set which is their all their policy locations. So here they want to analyze which uh, which uh, for each and every location, uh, uh, let's say you were to draw a five mile buffer or a 10 mile buffer in this example. So draw a 10 mile buffer against a point of interest. And then let me know how much is the accumulation of all my policies within that uh, 10 mile buffer. And then uh, sort it by the highest, uh, like which is the highest impacted versus lowest. So he here you can see they have uh, aggregated it by state. So you can see the state of New Jersey and New York were the highest impacted for these center point locations. So this uh, is another uh, such analysis. So here you can see instead of uh, ST intersect, the function which is used is STD within uh, because uh, you really want to find out the distance of point A from point B. So this is another analysis which they run heavily uh, on, on our system. So uh, just a quick idea about how do they uh, load their data. So what we have provided a self-service web application, uh, which gives them ability to load their portfolios on demand. So uh, we have uh, this self-service application, which our end users uh, use to load the portfolio. And then we have real-time feeds set up, which uh, go through each and every weather vendors all over the world. And whenever there is a new weather event, which is predicted, we get all that shape data for all those perils and load it into the database. So both of this is continuously being loaded uh, in real time. And just to give you an idea about some statistics of back when we started a few years ago to now, uh, what's the kind of workload we are talking about? So we have more than 300 clients who are 
using this system, right? So, and between each clan, they, there could be, as I said, multiple users. There could be underwriter, claims analyst, their manager. So, we have more than 3,000 users. So, uh, over the years, uh, we have uh, upwards of 25,000 portfolio data sets uh, which are loaded. This portfolio data set is, as I mentioned, nothing but their book of business. Um, their catalog of all their policy locations uh, identified with a unique portfolio name or a portfolio ID. So uh, this portfolio could be anywhere from 10,000 to 7 million locations. So, And then uh, about the, uh, the peril shapes, we have upwards of 10 million shapes which have been loaded. Uh, I mean, some of them are just multiple shapes uh, uh, combining to form one event, uh, but that's the uh, number of shapes. And, and every single day, all of these users uh, on demand, they can load any new portfolio. Every time they are underwriting new policies, non-renewing their old policies, they are merging with new businesses. So they, every time they want to up load a new portfolio. So whenever they, so do you, in, in every day, uh, anywhere from 20 to 100 new portfolios are ingested and anywhere from five to 50 new shape uh, events are uh, injected into our, our system. So uh, the total volume of our database is, uh, uh, almost 25 terabytes and at any given point of time depending on if, if there is any event happening or it's a quiet time 10 to 50 users are performing analysis concurrently so you can imagine that uh, the operation which I mentioned earlier imagine if it's a 7 million portfolio uh, intersecting against a 40,000 vertices uh, hurricane uh, and if there are 40 or 50 users running this kind of analysis concurrently with billions of locations uh, in those tables like pretty soon you could uh, imagine that that's a single database instance is not going to fly in fact uh, uh, when we started we used to run on a single monolith database uh, but very soon we realized that we need uh, ability to scale you know uh, differently rather than a single monolith database so that's when we considered uh, Postgres Citus. Uh, we are on Azure, so we use the PaaS instance of PaaS version of Citus, which is the Azure database for Postgres Hyperscale. Uh, and this is uh, our like configuration. Like we have one coordinate, uh, like uh, 16 core coordinator, and we have 16 worker nodes, each of 16 core with a two terabyte storage. And the number of shards we have configured is 32. I'll uh, show later on uh, some details about shard. But basically, what Citus allowed us to do is it allowed us to scale infinitely, right? Like we, whenever we needed more uh, data space to be added because our number of clients grew, we, we could just add new nodes or just increase the core of existing nodes. So this way, all our data is distributed. So whenever concurrently multiple users are performing analysis uh, against hundreds of events, uh, against thousands of their portfolios, it's all being distributed across all of these worker nodes. So this way, we could we were able to speed our uh, uh, queries and you know increase our concurrency by you know ten to hundred times. Uh, another advantage that we got uh, when we moved from our classic on-prem to the uh, Azure was the you know out of the box pass ability, right? It it like within a few minutes we are able to onboard uh, the entire database, which will probably take a few weeks if we had to you know provision a hardware of this this size our, ourselves right so uh, we we like so the postgres hyperscale really kind of uh, changed the scale game for us when we started migrating it to that so some details about uh, uh, partitioning and distribution like earlier sai gave a very very excellent talk about uh, how to choose the distribution key and distribution column but uh, i'll just go over some of the learnings and you know criteria which we followed you know to Make us succeed. So we we have, as I said, more than twenty five thousand portfolios. So we, we have a partition key using our portfolio ID. So this way, each and every unique data set has its own logical kind of a table uh, or partition, uh, which is used. So whenever we are querying against the client data, we are not querying against like ten billion or hundred billion records. We are just querying against that seven million record set, which belongs to that portfolio. Uh, uh, and this an, another advantage with this gives is for administration purpose that right? whenever new portfolios are added or deleted it's just adding a partition we just add that run a vacuum and it's done we don't have to go through a whole table scan of multi-billion tables or uh, re-scan re the index 
coming to distribution, distribution is very important as you learned from the earlier talk. So we uh, we uh, we use uh, account ID is one of uh, key for each. So you want to choose a key uh, which is kind of central to all your large tables. So uh, a key which which is usually very heavily used in joining all your tables. So that's what you want to use for uh, distribution uh, and also uh, which has high cardinality. Uh, uh, another thing is reference table. So uh, reference tables are tables which you you don't want to run against a distribute, distributed query, but they are going to be participating in, in the join for, uh, for the main table. So in our case, the client data is what really is growing and there are different like uh, kind of, we have a multi-tenant system, right? The so different clients are accessing different portfolios. So the portfolio data is distributed, but the shape data is a common denominator, right? All the clients are going to use the same shape or event data. So the all our event tables, we may mark it as a reference table. So uh, what Citus does is it, it's going to create a copy of that uh, on each and every worker node. So that gives us really good parallelism. So this is uh, just an example of our schema of uh, how it looks like. So, so we have, as you can see, site and account and a, uh, a polygon data. So uh, as you can see here at the bottom, uh, for each and every portfolio, we have a uh, partition. So you can see site underscore one is one partition and site underscore two is. And account ID is really a common key which we have in all our large, large tables, which is like site really represents a policy location. That's like address of a property which is being underwritten. And account is the name of that uh, end, client, end customer of the insurance company, right? They could be having an account with, let's say, Acme Industries or X Vegan Cafe. So here you can see Acme Industry account and all its locations are shaded in blue. So they will. Uh, so if we have distributed by account, uh, it makes sure that all the data in in the site and account for uh, for for that account uh, is all in co-located shards. So here is just another representation of what that looks like. So as you can see here, uh, if there are two nodes in the uh, in the cluster. Uh, the account A1 uh, and all the data for account A1 in all the tables, whether it's site, account, policy, and we have a few other tables. So all of them will be co-located in node one. So this way, whenever there is a query uh, uh, which is um, made to query for data from account one, it's all going to be uh, joining in from the single node and it doesn't do a cross node join. Yeah. And as you can see, the polygon data is replicated. Uh, because it's marked as a reference table. So whenever we are joining here data between site, account, and polygon, it's all going to be uh, for the same distribution data is going to be from same node. Uh, some guidelines on uh, what should be setting the shard count. So shard count is very important. Uh, so uh, you want to make sure that based on your data volume and the cardinality of your data, you need to set the right count. And also you need to be aware about your CPU cores. So uh, I, like ideal starting point is two to four times uh, your CPU core. So let's say if you have a 16 V core, then you will want to have your shard at least to 32. So this allows for future scaling. And what happens is uh, each shard uh, is going to uh, reference against one CPU, it's going to use one CPU core. So whenever you are firing the query. So this has to be kept in mind whenever you are architecting your uh, database. Uh, some other uh, server parameters which uh, we learned along the way as we were trying to scale and support the high concurrency which kind of mattered to us. So enable nested loop. So what, what that does is uh, it uh, uh, like so by in, turning off in, enable nested, uh, nested loop entirely, it discourages the planner from using uh, uh, that method. Another uh, setting which we change is work mem setting. That's the base maximum amount of memory used for any query operation. So default is four megabytes. So obviously uh, some of our large data sets where each query, the data are in few gigs. Uh, you know, we had to adjust that on all coordinator and worker nodes and the max intermediate result sites. So uh, this is like uh, maximum size after which it get the uh, uh, data which will not be pushed down to worker node and remaining at the coordinator, which obviously we do not want. We want the day, we want the query to be parallelized and going to the worker node. So we, the default is one gig, but we had to increase it. So now uh, I'll take it up to my colleague Mahipal, who is going to give us a quick demo about, uh, you know, the same uh, example which I showed. Uh, 
is going to show uh, querying a site and a policy location uh, uh, on a real Citus cluster and compare against a uh, standalone Postgres to see uh, the difference. On to you, Maipal. Yeah, hi. Hi, uh, hello everyone. So as uh, my colleague Nino mentioned, so I'm going to show uh, like a quick demo on like uh, the performance of that special queries, uh, which we use day-to-day -day activities. So as part of that, uh, like we also going to show like uh, some comparative analysis of like our special performance, uh, special query performance against uh, Citus and the uh, standalone. So bef before jump into the details, uh, details of the uh, demo, Yes, I want to quickly show uh, like uh, some configuration of our uh, like uh, Citus cluster and uh, standalone. So if you see on my screen, I have like we have a one small cluster like a uh, uh, Citus cluster with four node, uh, four worker nodes each with have four V cores. And uh, other hand, uh, we have uh, uh, like a standalone PG, uh, single node, single node uh, standalone PG with sixteen V cores and uh, two terabytes. So like number of cores wise and Citus and uh, standalone, we are almost same. But like uh, we just we wanted to show how the performance uh, benefits we are seeing from the Citus. So let's say like we in, in as part of this demo, just we picked like uh, some good uh, good size portfolio, which is of seven uh, seven million uh, location uh, locations. So just I, I will quickly show like uh, we have like a two. If you see my screen on the left side, I have the Citus, and the right side I can I can uh, this is on the standalone PG. So like. Uh, let me quickly show the, the table structure for this one. For example, if I take uh, uh, this particular table, we, the, the the data and the data structure of the the, uh, the data structure on this table is exactly same on the standalone also. But when it comes to the performance, and we did see the uh, significant difference, especially it, it, it's with single user. Some extent we are close, but like as we started adding the more uh, like a user parallel users, we do the significant difference. With similar co configuration on the standalone versus Citus. So in this one, like especially if you see, we have uh, we use most of the uh, special uh, compute uh, with uh, like uh, uh, some points and polygons, against like uh, uh, these all the locations. We have the special index on the both the sides. And if I try in, in the first scenario, I'm like we are trying to show as my colleague mentioned, in Nero mentioned. So just we are taking one of the like biggest. Uh, uh, event uh, event which is having a hurricane event which is happened recent times is the Irma. So it has like thousands of polygons associated uh, uh, in the, as part of that event. But like uh, that will imp like we are trying to find how that particular event uh, got impacted my portfolio, like uh, my pol like portfolio like local policy locations. So and based out of that, I am trying to find we are trying to find the accumulation how much exposure got impacted because of that. So if I go back here, so. So if I if I execute the same query, I'm I'm running on the one is on the site is on the left side, and also same query which I'm running on the right side, which is which is on the single node. So if you see the like both having the spatial index, exact spatial index. If you see timing, if you see time wise, there will be a difference uh, when we compare with the Citus and uh, 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 and uh, standalone PG, even though they have, they have the similar configuration. Same way, like if we like if we have the different use case. One is like okay. How my polygons, uh, like a particular event, has a uh, thousands of polygons, which is impacting uh, uh, my uh, portfolio uh, policy locations. And other aspect is like okay, some scenarios like we have like uh, local storm points, like it can be a tornado or hail. Uh, like for those also, they can have impact on the you know, like policy and locations of uh, a portfolio. And in in that scenario, we like not only we use a special function called intersect, we also use a, Sometimes uh, like a uh, distant, like we use a distant. Okay, let's say for example, if the uh, particular event is happening at a particular point, so how how many like if it's a 10 miles buffer, how many of my locations got impacted within 10 miles buffer around this particular point? So for that we use like a uh, uh, like other special uh, uh, function that is called STD within. Using that like uh, we we will get the like uh, we will try to find and anal analyze the impacted locations. So. If you see here, like in the good part with this one is in this one we can provide. Okay, if the user want to analyze, okay, let's say how many locations impacted uh, because of the uh, uh, because of the tornado within a one mile radius or two mile radius, they can give the uh, uh, parameter dynamically this value, and they can see the uh, like how far we go from that uh, particular uh, tornado or hail point, how many locations are impacted when we change that one. So if you see this one, like if we, if I see the similar uh, analysis on the both the class, both the uh, Citus and 
sorry, this is a typo. Let me copy. So if 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 I if I if I do the similar analysis on both the like uh, CITES as well as a uh, uh, standalone PG, we can see the uh, significance difference in 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 these queries especially. So just just, just similar to the similar to the above query, the, uh, si similar to the above query, this is also will show the just similar uh, one of the different uh, different kind of the spatial function. But like this is this this is also have the like a, a, a perform the different. Uh, uh, performance behavior uh, on the standalone PG when we compare to uh, uh, CITES. So the timing wise, if you see, this is this came back around eight, 10 seconds. But if it's similar query, uh, it is taking much longer on the uh, standalone PG. So like, uh, and uh, one of the imp important thing is okay, as like even though we like uh, the uh, like on the uh, whatever the data set we are trying to do, like the data set is properly distributed or indexed. But like if have, when it comes to CITES, we are efficiently use that uh, uh, like feature of the sharding internally, and uh, that that will, that is that is giving the performance uh, very quick. But uh, compare uh, compared with the standalone PG, if you see this this query just came back in 20, uh, 10 second, 10 seconds. But if you same query exact query, we see standalone PG took twenty four seconds. That that is a uh, that kind of uh, difference we do see, and that too this is a single uh, here we are just running the single query on both the uh, both the servers. But when it is as we started adding the more parallel uh, uh, queries, uh, we do see like it's a, it's, it's a significant uh, uh, difference in the performance. Like as like a standalone PG is drastically uh, uh, going down with the performance, but in the CITES, even like if you go to 20, 30 users, also we do see the minor difference in the uh, performance. And also like just we wanted to take one of the biggest port like the biggest portfolio. We have even the not only the spatial uh, aspects. Even uh, for the regular aggregation queries, also like we in our application, we do always like we do uh, apart from the spatial, we also do the aggregate by different uh, levels and the data. Even the straightforward aggregations also we do see the uh, like a significant difference in performance uh, like uh, when we use CITES over the standalone PG. Let me quickly show uh, this one uh, this difference. So and uh, while it is running, so apart from that, like uh, in, in day to day, like uh, we do load lot of data. Not only the uh, one one part of our application uh, use case on the site is uh, re reading the data from the application, and other part is like loading the lot of data. Like every day, like we we load hundreds of hundreds hundreds of data sets. Like each each data set will have GBs of data. So, like uh, we like without having any impact on the UI, like on the on the front end side. So even with that aspect, we use that uh, like uh, uh, for that we use that bulk uh, uh, PG provides out of the out of the box that like uh, bulk copy. Using that even the GB sub data we load in seconds without having any impact on the performance on the selective queries. So and uh, and as part of the and after loading the data to perform better on the CITES, we do proper analyze on the queries and uh, uh, like uh, we do vacuum daily basis. Uh, like uh, to avoid any dead tuples present in the databases. With all this, like uh, uh, like uh, we do uh, see the better performance as we expected. So even if you see just a regular regular aggregation query, it came back. So if you see on the left side, the, 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 each each I am joining with the three tables. Each table have around seven million locations, but on the left side it took 15 seconds, but on the right side, if you see on the standalone PG, it will 34 seconds. Same level of data set. So just yeah. So that's all uh, I wanted to show as part of the demo. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm done with demo. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. That was very cool. I, I love side by side demos. Um, and it's it's amazing that it's like the same hardware, but still uh, because of the parallelism, it gets uh, it gets much faster. Uh, so uh, I guess one question, uh, like what, what were some of the biggest challenges you ran into? Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, I, I think that's all. Uh, from, with that, I, 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 I have done yeah. with the, what we need to cover as part of yeah. the demo. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Marco, yeah, to answer your question, uh, some of the uh, big challenges was mostly, as I said, uh, figuring out the exact design of, because even with the best product, right? If we are not like, yeah, if we don't have our distribution right, that could really uh, see like this queries which Mahipal was showing earlier. Like if if this if the if the shard the sharding the distribution was not done right, that that could make a big difference. So just figuring that out uh, was kind of a big challenge. But yeah, once we got that 
uh, sweet spot we were able to you know uh, perform really well yeah awesome well thank you very much this was uh, very interesting and great to see